What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Crossroads Rebuild channel. I'm here at the shop today. I have not made a video in months. Um, life in general has gotten in the way between being busy with work. I was sick for a while. I got the nasty C word virus and uh, other things going on. But hey, I'm doing a lot better, although my voice is still messed up. So if I don't sound quite right, that's what it is. But I'm good. Uh, but I'm back at the shop and I'm ready to do some work. I've got the 55 Chevy behind me where we left off last time uh, working on that. We got the fuel tank installed and uh, ready to move on, not only test uh, the, the fuel system now that it's been replaced, uh, but also we've got brakes to do, we've got exhaust to do, we got all sorts of things to do. But this video is actually not about the 55 today. Don't worry, it's coming back. And if you've joined my channel specifically to watch the 55 rebuild or restoration, uh, I encourage you to watch this video anyway, uh, but even if it's not your jam, um, come back soon because we will be having more content on the 55 very, very soon. Excited to be working more on that. Today's actually about a different vehicle and it's kind of more my OG style videos where we're, we're starting uh, a new rebuild. And uh, this particular rebuild is gonna be a vehicle that's replacing something else I owned. It's for me, um, kind of bought it spur of the moment. And uh, today is just the first in the series because we're just gonna get it drivable and then I'm gonna to have to put it on pause while I work on some other things, and then we'll come back to it. But uh, I, I should probably show you the vehicle so you understand a little bit better what I'm talking about. If you hear a dog in the background, I'm sorry. You know that there are dogs here at the space that I rent for this shop. So hopefully they won't be talking too much, but that's what's going on with the dogs. Anyway, let me show you the vehicle. Let me show you what we gotta to do today, and uh, we'll, we'll get right into it. Okay, and so let's go ahead and start our tour over here. May as well get the worst news out of the way. You can see she took quite a hit here in this front left corner, driver's side corner, and well, she's looking a little sorry for herself. Now, this, bad, this part looks pretty bad. The rest of it's gonna look pretty good, and you'll see that in a minute, but let's go ahead and examine what we've got going on here. Well, first of all, obviously, our suspension's a mess. We've got uh, a broken knuckle. Um, a lot of our links are broken. Um, we've got wires <laughs> that have been pulled out, wires pulled out. Obviously, the wheel contacted um, the body right there. Um, actually, let's see if we can get in there. You can actually see our wheel took quite a hit and uh, is, well, obviously the tire's deflated. Not sure if the tire itself is good, I'm hoping so. Uh, but at the very least, the wheel is shot. We've got damage here to our front impact bar. It's not terrible, uh, but it did kink up a little bit right there. Unfortunately, got our hood, obviously our headlight, our fender, the fenders are just plastic, so that's all broken. Uh, obviously, some of our mounts and stuff are broken in here. Um, so this corner's just looking pretty sorry for itself. Uh, we're gonna have to do a lot of work right here uh, just to get this thing off the trailer, which is honestly what this video is about today. Well, somebody came over to visit me, got out of the fence. Anyway, um, hopefully he'll just wander off and do his own thing. So this corner is not looking the greatest right now, and that's what we're gonna work on today. But before we do that, let me go ahead and give you a tour around the rest of this beautiful vehicle. Let's start inside here, where the most important thing I'd like to show you is we didn't blow any airbags. Curtain airbags, both sides are still good. Our uh, driver and passenger uh, side impact airbags are good. Uh, steering wheel, dashboard, all still good. And this thing is in good shape overall. A little dirty, obviously it needs a clean up, but it doesn't smell bad. And most importantly, it's in really, really good shape. This vehicle has some really good options. It's not fully optioned out because we like don't have our nice sports seats and things like that. Um, but we do have a nice panoramic sunroof, got a heated steering wheel, power everything in here. Moving on to the back, I've got some of the parts that I bought to fix it up in here. There's a replacement wheel. We've got our replacement uh, drive shaft or CV axle. I forgot to point that out up front, but CV axle was damaged, so there's that. Uh, but these seats are in great shape as well. Don't have any power to the vehicle right now, so I can't open this, uh, but we do have a lot of the broken parts from the accident here. Uh, but as you can see, the outside is in really, really good shape, uh, except for one thing, which has nothing to do with the accident. Unfortunately, made some contact with something up here on this door before, which is a real bummer because otherwise it's in really good shape. Hey, buddy. But uh, so we'll have to get that fixed. We can't leave it like that. Uh, but as you can see, wheel's a little dirty, but this side is in really good shape. Now, one unfortunate thing is when this hood got hit on the other side, it did push it here and we can kind of 
come up here and we can see we did damage that corner of that fender. Um, not sure if we can fix that or not, uh, but um, we'll have to take a look at that. Uh, obviously our bumper is in really bad shape. We do have a good headlight here, one fog light. Obviously all our grills are missing, but, but one other really good important piece of information is this thing does run. Obviously it doesn't drive at the moment, uh, but it does run. The Copart listing said it ran. Um, when I got it, obviously everything was dead. And so um, I was able to put a little bit of power to it with a jump box and get her running and she does run and she sounds great. But let's talk about that battery for just a minute. All right, guys, as you can see, she is stone cold dead. And so we need to figure out what's going on with our battery. And that is where this device comes in right here. This is a King Bolin battery tester that they supplied to me to test out. Now, this is not a sponsored episode. They did not pay me to test this out or to say anything nice about it. This will be my unbiased, totally truthful opinion about this device, but they did supply it to me to test out. And I think this vehicle is the perfect vehicle to try it out on because as you can see, it is dead. That is so common with auction vehicles. They sit on the lot for weeks or months, uh, sometimes longer. And unfortunately, many times they come just like this one with a completely dead battery. So we're gonna go ahead and hop into the back, hook this thing up to the battery and see if we can find out any information about the battery and whether it will work at all. I guess that means I'm gonna have to clean out the back. All right, let's go. All right, and here we are around back. I put power to the thing long enough to get this power trunk uh, opened up. And as I mentioned to you earlier, all the stuff from the, the broken stuff from the accident, the floor mats, all that stuff's back here. So I'm gonna have to empty this out real quick because our battery is right down underneath there. So let me get this emptied out and I'll be right back with you momentarily. All right, got most of that stuff moved up there carefully, trying not to damage my nice seats. Uh, you know what? It looks like they must have just taken shovels or brooms or something, swept up all these pieces off the road, and just dumped it in the back, because this is just full of gravel and everything else. Um, it's really quite a mess. Anyway, the battery, well, looks like we've actually got a little farther to go. Oh, we got some freebies. I wonder if there's anything good here. The battery's right up under here, so eh, I guess I got a little more to do. Be right back with you. All right, there we go. We now have access to our battery. It's just five bolts or screws rather to hold it in. Used one of these umbrellas I found back here to hold up that panel and boom, there is our battery. So let's go ahead and hook up our King Bowling. And I'm pretty sure that we're gonna find that we have no charge whatsoever, but we're gonna give it a shot anyway here and see what happens. So we got our negative right here. We'll hook it up like so. All right, positive, of course BMW makes it hard to get to, there we go, and boom, connection there, all right, and we are completely dead, and this is actually a BMW battery, don't know if this thing will take a charge, but before I spend the money to replace it, I think I'm going to give it a try. So we do know that we can jump start this thing and move it, but unfortunately we can't test it at the moment because she is completely dead, showing no voltage, not even enough to power this device. So let me throw this on the charger and we will see what we read then, see if this battery can be revived. Alrighty, so I've got her jacked up here and now I gotta get this wheel off. Now it's still a little bit mangled there. I think I can get that to move, get the wheel off. And then I have bought um, what should be all the pieces I need uh, to fix this corner and hopefully make her to sit properly on all four wheels again uh, so that we can drive her off the trailer. Of course, we're going to have to replace the wheel, hopefully not a tire, and uh, we'll get to that eventually. But first things first, let me see if I can get this all taken apart. Well, I've got updates. As you can see behind me, stuff's gone. <laughs> it was a lot more work than expected. And a lot of that comes down to never having done it before and working solo. So uh, kind of having to figure it out as I go and uh, obviously having to overcome the awkwardness of broken parts not doing what they're supposed to be doing and everything is harder to get off and move and yada, 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 you get the point. 
Um, I'm a little embarrassed actually by how long that took me to get to this point. Um, but as you can see, I've got most of it out of there. Um, well, let me just get you in a little closer. All right, well, as you can see, wheel here, hub, disc, all that stuff there. Still have our shock installed, which will probably have to come out. Uh, and I'm not sure how hard that's gonna be to get to, so that might be some work from the top. Um, our upper control arm here is, uh, well, it's, you know, it's not the way it should be. Uh, so we got that to figure out yet. Um, I've got the bolts soaking. I, you know, typical fashion, had to get stuff out of the way to get to other stuff, so on and so forth. So uh, we'll see how that works. I've had to use a combination of penetrating fluid and heat and brute force and, you know, maybe even a modicum of ingenuity, although I don't know, it's me, so it's not really ingenuity, but you, you get the point. I've had to get to creative. And uh, this thing's just kind of in our way at this point. It's not really doing anything. Um, but anyway, here we are. Um, this guy is going to be a little bit of a pain to get out. And I'm not sure if this is bent. I'm not sure if that's the right shape or not. I hope it is. But probably not going to know until I try to hook new stuff up. Um, however, obviously he's going to be a little bit of a challenge. So you can't even see what I'm pointing at. He's going to be a little bit of a challenge to get out because that just spins now. Um, obviously I've got tie rod in. I don't know if that came with uh, all my replacement pieces, so I'll have to see. Uh, the good news is, as far as I can tell, I don't think the subframe is hurt, and that was one thing I was concerned about. You can see where the tire made contact with it here, uh, but all the mounts appear to be as they should be, as far as I can tell. So, I've been taking off broken stuff as I go. We'll figure that stuff out later. Mostly, I just need to make room here for a wheel and uh i guess we've gotten to a point where it's time to start figuring out uh what i have and what can go back in uh honestly this shock might be okay i may not have to take that guy out i think i have one though just in case but we'll figure that out later so i need to figure this out for sure and i need to figure that out for sure because you know steering that could probably wait if it needs to and yeah, other stuff can probably wait. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the new CV axle in there today, but that's not the end of the world either. So anyway, I want to start taking apart, whoop, you can't see it, taking stuff out of that box, see what I've got to work with here, and see if I can start putting stuff back together. All right, let's keep going. All right, and here are my pieces. Thankfully, this is largely all in, intact still. They didn't take it apart, which is nice. They even included a replacement CV axle, which I didn't know was going to be included. So that's good, I guess. Um, might be able to replace, or excuse me, return the one that I bought. Uh, it wasn't very expensive, so I don't know. Maybe I'll put a new one in. We'll see. That one's there, though. Maybe we'll be able to use it for now. Everything else looks good. Old brake line, that'll come off. Upper control arm looks, you know, more the way that it should. And then we've got a replacement shock, which, like I said, I think... The one in there is still good, so you know what? Let's take that over there and compare. All right, here we go. Let's see. <clears throat> is, it, is this the right side? Yeah, that's the right side. There we go. No, it's not. Is it the same? Yeah, oh yeah, it's the same. <laughs> all right. I don't know. Kind of, kind of looks all right-ish. What do you think? I guess it goes, what? Is this backwards? Did I get the wrong side? I sure hope I didn't get the wrong side. Uh-oh. We got more to compare. <sighs> Did I get the wrong side? I don't think so. Okay, let's take a look. All right. More updates. Not the kind I want to give. Well, good news. That's the right piece right there. Those numbers match. Uh, there's our broken one, and as you can see, if we look at the back here, well, look at the front disc, or excuse me, the calipers on the right, uh, as you can see over here, caliper mounts on the left, and, uh, comparing these numbers, who can't even see those, can you? Well, you can't read them, but you gotta take my word for it. 
That says 8.4. Ours says 8.3. So, they sent me the wrong side. Uh, that is a passenger side. Um, but they got that piece correct. It took forever getting this stuff to me also. So, I'm going to have to contact them and see about getting my money back. But in the meantime, I've got this tour apart. And I need to get this thing off the trailer. Uh, because it needs to go... Uh, well, I borrowed the trailer. So I've got some homework to do. See if we can get this thing taken care of. Because I do need to get this thing off of the trailer. This is a real setback. So so I guess this is where we pause the video. And I'll come back to you soon. All right, guys. And we are back. I've actually got a, a friend here helping me. My father-in-law is going to be helping me today. Things like this are always easier with two sets of hands, right? Well, we got most of the broken stuff out the other day, just me working by myself. You saw that struggle, and you saw the problem we ran into where my replacement parts were for the wrong side. They sent me for the passenger side. By the way, I hope you can hear, it is super windy. We just had a series of storms go by. Still crazy windy, so I hope you can hear what I'm saying. Uh, but anyway, uh, today, my goal is to get the rest of the couple broken things out of here and to get the new stuff in because I need to get this thing to drive itself off this trailer. I gotta return the trailer to its owner. So let me show you real quick what we've accomplished up close, what we need to do today, and then we'll just get right to work. Well, let's go ahead and take a quick tour. All right, guys, and here is where we're starting today. Let me show you real quick what's left to do as far as breaking, uh, breaking. Let me show you real quick what is left to do as far as getting out the broken parts. Well, for starters, tie rod end. I thought I had to replace that, bought a new one, and I think this one might be okay. I need to take these things off real quick might be able to use that. I've got a replacement if I need it. I got to get the rest of this uh, joint out of here off of the sway bar. Got a replacement, uh, but those are going to be a little bit challenging because that'll just spin now. So a little bit of work to get that out. Shouldn't be too big a deal. This might be a little harder. I've got to get the remnant of the CV axle out. Um, hopefully it'll pop out relatively easily, but we'll see. And then lastly, I've got to get the upper control arm out. We've got the, the level sensor for the suspension here. That should be easy. Uh, we've got two bolts either side. If you can see how folded up this thing is. Uh, that one shouldn't be too bad. This one might be a little more challenging since that bolt's way up in there, but we'll see. Uh, we'll get that out. And that, with those parts out, will be the end of all the broken stuff. There's our old knuckle. We will need some of those parts when we get there. Uh, but over here, I have replacements. I've got, so we've got several things going on here. We've got our new knuckle, um, spindle, whatever you call it. Again, we're gonna use our dust shield and our brakes and all that from the other one. They're fine. Upper control arm, uh, we've got one of our rear, where there's a front and a rear um, control arm. And I've got the other one over there. Then we've got our sway bar end link right there as well. And then also, you know that our wheel and tire over here were destroyed. Here's our tire. Um, you know, the wheel was broken, but so is the tire. So that's no good. That's a piece of junk, wall art, I don't know. There's our replacement. Crappy wheel, it'll get the job done, it's solid. Bought the cheapest tire I could find. It's kind of an odd size, so unfortunately it's more than I want to spend, but it will give us the opportunity to roll this thing once we get all of that installed. Then we can throw that battery in, fire it up, and hopefully drive it off this trailer. So that being said, you guys are going back on a time lapse. Watch this, wish us luck. We got work to do before the bottom drops out of this weather. It's nice right now, cold, windy, but it's nice. Let's get it done while we can. All right, let's go. All right, you got pressure, go for it. You can, but you don't have a lot of. I don't either. Do you want? Uh... All right, folks. Overachieving father-in-law got it out, and I didn't even have a camera going. But hey, it's out. That thing was that okay? When you don't have the rest of the CV axle attached to that thing, that is hateful to get out. We ended up taking the shock to get a uh, shock out, which is not damaged, but to get a better angle. And we were thinking about pulling it with the truck, as you saw, 
Uh, but then he just put a few little poles on it and I ratcheted it tight, <laughs> pull on it, and poof, out right she out. came. So, well, we missed the moment on camera, but it's out, so that's the most important thing. I guess that means we can keep going. All right, let's go. All right, we have updates. We have finally gotten everything out. The, I was gonna reuse, where did it go? Don't know where it is, but anyway, I was gonna reuse the old tie rod end, there it is. But we are having trouble getting that to break loose and I don't wanna strip it out and get hateful with it. Uh, we already had this, so we're gonna use it. I wanted to return it, but it wasn't that expensive, so there we go. Uh, so that's the first new part put back on and wanted to pause and show you where we are. Um, here's our old upper control arm and it's out and it's all kind of goofy shaped uh, but it came out relatively easily again there's many things up top that we had to take off just to make access more doable uh, so that's out so here in a second uh, we're going to go ahead and start throwing it together we'll put in that upper control arm first uh, probably put that shock back in and then get our knuckle over there and start putting all that stuff together very exciting times we're making progress and I am looking forward to getting this thing back on all four wheels. It's been too long. So let's go ahead and keep looking. Alrighty guys, I am excited to say our suspension is loosely together. Everything is in place, nothing at all is tightened down. Obviously all the brake components are still missing. Uh, we, had to do, <laughs> we had to do a lot of scavenging of parts from the old stuff. Uh, things like uh, these nuts that are a 12.27 millimeter nut uh, that didn't come with the replacements, so on and so forth. Uh, but some of them were a fight, some of them went really, really well but everything is in. We've got a brand new CV axle, brand new uh, sway bar end link, brand new tie rod end, and then used parts for everything else, and everything is in. So, we're gonna go ahead and put you guys on a time lapse while we, uh, we're not tightening everything fully. Obviously, it needs to be on the ground before we tighten everything up all together, um, but we're going to tighten it, snug it up a lot more than it is. As you can see, uh, you know, we left everything finger tight. Um, we're gonna head to snug everything up a little bit, get the brakes and all that reinstalled, um, and then uh, we'll be very close to ready to put our new tire on and see if we can get this thing off the trailer. So with that being said, you know where you go. Get back on the time lapse. Here we go. Alrighty, and there we have it. Our brakes are back together. Our wiring has been run. Um, our suspension has been tightened up enough to set it down. Obviously, I haven't fully tightened it until that suspension is uh, at its normal travel. We'll deal with that a little later. Because right now, we're just trying to get this thing off the trailer. Um, buttoned up our wiring and uh, got stuff up out of the road. We are just about ready to put that new tire on and put this thing down on its four wheels again for the first time in who knows how long. Uh, after we do that, I do still need to tighten that center nut. It's not the end of the world right now because we're not driving it anywhere. Button up a couple things, put some power to it, and we are almost ready to try to drag this thing, not drag, drive this thing off the trailer. So that being said, we're gonna take care of those last couple things. Wish us luck, and let's see how it goes. You see that? I've never seen it on all four wheels. Alrighty folks, she is sitting on all four wheels again. We got her on the ground, well, on the trailer. Uh, need to zip up those that wheel a little tighter and move a few things out of the way. Oh yeah, we got battery to deal with. We'll come to that in a second. Anyway, we're gonna tighten a few things up and then we'll be uh, putting power to it shortly. 
see if we can get it off the trailer. Alrighty guys, well it is time to put the battery back in the X5 because she's sitting on all fours again. And uh, I, you remember earlier in the video, I uh, had to take this home because it was reading nothing. Couldn't even start up our King Bolin BM550 uh, battery tester. It, it, it did nothing. So um, I took it home, put it on a charge, uh, you'll notice this is an AGM battery right here, and I was a little concerned because this is an expensive battery. Uh, this one happens to be a BMW battery, which is great. You can see it's only about two and a half years old, so I was hopeful that we could save this one, uh, but it was dead, 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 zero volts. Well, anyway, charged it up, brought it home, or excuse me, brought it back to the car. Let's hook it up. Let's hook up the tester, and let's see if this battery came back to life. All right, guys, switch cameraman so you can see this a little better. So this is a King Bolin BM550. And let's go ahead and hook it up to our battery and see if we brought it back. Come on in here with that camera. And you can see right here, we're blinking 12 volts, so it automatically detects the voltage. There we go, you can see that a little bit better. Uh, the voltage will hit OK. Now it wants to know how many cranking amps. Well, if we look right here, uh, this is rated at 850 cold cranking amps. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. 850 cold cranking amps. Almost there. Okay, now she's testing the battery. Let's see what it comes back with. And it's reading 853 cold cranking amps within spec. And you see right there, it says the battery is good. And that is awesome news. So you can see here, we're able to determine that this battery is still good with our King Bolin BM550 battery tester. Uh, so many of these auction cars, you pick them up and it's just like this, the batteries are dead. I have had to buy more batteries than I can even say uh, because I haven't been able to resurrect them. Uh, they sit on the auction lots forever and that's terrible for a battery. So I'm so thankful, so grateful, so uh, pleased that this battery is still good after we took it home and charged it and we're able to confirm that with our King Bolin battery tester. Now again, as I told you before, they did not pay me to review this. They gave it to me. They did give me the device uh, to test and to tell you my honest opinion. And my honest opinion is this is very handy. If I'm out at the auction lot at Copart or IAA, I can take this with me, throw it in my toolbox, and I can test batteries out there. I can take it home with my spare batteries or to the shop and be able to test them, see how they're doing. If ever I'm having a problem with the car's electrical system, of course, I can use this to test the battery as well. So a big thank, a big thank you and a shout out to King Bowen for sending me this tester. That's going to be a great tool in my arsenal. Now, with that being said, now that we know that this battery is good, let's unhook it and throw it back in the car. Oh, this is awkward. All right, get my little balancing act up here. Let's see, negatives on this side, so we gotta flip it around. There we go. And make sure this stuff's all out of the way. Yeah, this is always the dance you do when you're trying to get a battery into an awkward position. Alrighty guys, we are ready to take this thing off the trailer. Finally, after all of this effort today, after everything was done, got the battery back installed and realized, yeah, it didn't have the key, it was in a different vehicle. So I had to run home, get it, but we're here now. Let's get this thing off the trailer. Hope everything else is fine, but the suspension is all back together. I'm gonna hop in there, fire it up, and for the first time, move this thing under its own power since getting it. Let's go. All right, here we go. Fire right up. Awesome. She works, she drives again. This is a little buffing to do and we'll be all right. She looks rough. <laughs> Camera person, Erica, you can recognize Erica's voice, right? <laughs> Camera person thinks it looks rough. Yeah, she's still rough. A lot of work to do. All right, guys, that is where this video is going to end. The X5 is back on all fours and she's running, driving, sounds great. 
Um, still some buttoning up, tightening up to do in there. We'll do all that as we replace all the broken stuff. This is not the next vehicle that you'll see on, uh, on the channel. We've got work to do on the 55 and some other things as well. Uh, but I had to get this thing off of that trailer because that was a borrowed trailer, so it's going back to its owner. And I'm excited, though, uh, that it is running, driving again on its own. We will see more of this one sometime soon. Anyway, we're going to wrap it up there for today. Another shout out to King Bowen for sending me the battery tester. Uh, I enjoyed using it. It was very helpful. I'll leave a link in the description where you can grab one for yourself uh, if you'd like to. But with that being said, please stay tuned for another video coming soon. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.